Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and I'm joining you from Fee Week here at Ezrin, ESA's establishment in Frascati, Italy. And the topic of the day is AI for EO, or Artificial Intelligence for Earth Observation. I'm speaking with Patrick Helber from the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Patrick, I want to start by asking, artificial intelligence, when we think of artificial intelligence, we think of robots. But what, if, what exactly is artificial intelligence for Earth Observation? Um, in our case, um, artificial intelligence is uh, a software, a neural network, um, which is starting with random weights. Um, you're training it using Earth observation data, Sentinel-2 satellite images, for example, and the neural network learns automatically um, how a Sentinel-2 satellite image looks like and is able to um, segment or classify the objects and the land cover, the land use seen in Sentinel-2 images automatically. Just It's beyond the, the known of AI in the robotics area. So you're teaching the computer how to recognize certain types of land? Exactly. So we have a large amount of Sentinel-2 um, imagery, terabytes per day. What we need to train um, in this case, supervised AI methods is ground truth data, segmentation mass, classification annotations um, on uh, satellite images, and then to train an AI how uh, the satellite images should be segmented. And over time, the, the, the AI learns it and can uh, do the, the uh, segmentation or the classification on new unseen data. So for those of us who aren't familiar with the Earth observation terms, when we talk about land classification, we're talking about crops, we're talking about cities. What, what, what sort of uh, aspects are we looking at? Exactly. So one example would be land use and land cover. So if you're talking about land cover, about forest, uh, agriculture, or in land use, just, uh, distinguishing between industrial area or residential area. Um, of course, it is depending on if we have RGB information, optical information, or we have multispectral information. And also the spatial resolution is uh, of importance. With Sentinel-2 image, uh, images, you have the advantage that you get an image around about uh, all five days, and then you can really temporally uh, observe what, how, the, how the planet, our Earth, uh, changes. And if you want to uh, detect, um, let's say, for example, cars or mapping something like else, you need high resolution satellite images, of course. Now, who's using this information? Um, using the information are, um, the user of the information are, for example, uh, space agencies uh, who want to uh, uh, monitor the sustainable development goals. So the sustainable development goals were announced by the United Nations in 2016, 2015, uh, to be addressed by 2030. And you want to monitor uh, how, how far are we? Did we, did we achieve the, the goals already? Uh, th those are uh, users of the, um, the satellite images. Also, uh, companies like insurance companies, they want to know um, how, how high uh, the damage must be after natural disaster, for example. Now, of course, uh, you're from the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Outside of EO, what is one of the most exciting things you see coming out of AI today? So the most exciting thing, um, which was also the reason why we started working on that topic, was the Copernicus program. And uh, the EU and ESA are making all this data publicly available for all purposes, for commercial, for research, and we can do with the data what we want. And that's an exciting prospect for artificial intelligence. Exactly, because uh, for artificial intelligence and uh, currently the methods which are state of the art, we need a large amount of data. And this is exactly what we are given by the Copernicus program. Now we have to um, create a ground truth data set so that we can really train our AIs and getting a global AI uh, running automatically on these images. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about our planet, visit our website at www.isa.int.